hey, if we're live, let us know. Smack that heart button. Charge us up, just like the little old Energizer Bunny to drop some good golden nuggets on your head today. Yep. So we're back with the legend, the man, the myth, <laughs> the legend, Mr. Grant Allerton. This dude's a champ. Uh, for you guys that don't know how we met, I'll just kind of give our backstory. Um, this guy sold me about $55,000 worth of product and I bought it and I, we're still friends. <laughs> so it was worthwhile. <laughs> so that's a good, that's a good salesperson. So, and, and but no, in all, in all honesty, Grant's an awesome person. If you guys have not seen our previous two, maybe three interviews, is this our third one or a second or, or more? Bro, that I don't even know. I think we might be on like four or five if you count, yeah. you know, going both ways now at this point. We can't yeah. quit. We can't yeah, stop. No, it's, it's an addiction. It's amazing. So I can't get enough of sales. I can't get enough of like language patterns and reading people. And really at the end of the day, this isn't something where it's sell or be sold, like the old school Wolf of Wall Street or whatnot. This is all about like solution providing and helping the client find that angle in their brain that makes them accept that that want and need to enroll or buy your product as the solution um, to whatever they're they're going through whether it's fitness marketing agencies a dental office it doesn't really matter because if people don't feel or understand their pains um, in a new way than everybody else the way everybody else explains it then you'll be what we call a commodity uh, mm. commodity salesperson um, you'll blame the leads you'll blame the marketing you'll blame, 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 and be the victim the whole time. But once we kind of change that and you kind of learn some of the language patterns we may even throw out here today, which actually we will, not may, um, you, you'll see what I mean. So was that a good intro for you, Grant? Yeah, I'll take it, man. I, I love that you use the word legend. I'm, <laughs> I'm so young. If anything, I'm in the making, but in the making. We, we can celebrate. I just finally crossed over the eight-figure in sales, Mark. So Boom. officially an eight-figure sales coach, Boom. I guess. <laughs> Boom. Let's go with an eight. That's, I'm born October 8th, so eight is a magical number to me. I love I'll take it. it. I'll take it. Oh, congrats, man. Thanks, so so let, let's get a little history lesson. Like, like when did you start selling? Um, first thing I ever sold was a photocopied, uh, uh, drawing that I did back in second grade. It was like second or third grade. I, I might be misquoting myself, but yeah, I was drawing a picture. My friend loved it. And I was like, cool. Well, why don't I just make a 10 cent copy and sell it for a buck? And I was in the profit, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah I've just kind of always cool. had the blood, right? Like I grew up poor, realized that if you want money, you got to exchange it for something of value figured, Hey, if I can exchange it for something of value, that's not mine, I'm not on the hook for as much fulfillment. And so I can focus more on the revenue driving activities. So hence here, I sell good products. Yeah. Like what, when did you know, like mentally that this was going to be your career? I mean, to say that there was like a, a specific day would be a lie. I mean, it'd make a great story, I'm sure. But like, I, um, I've always been fascinated with communication. I'm not really a numbers guy and maybe that sounds funny. Like I failed math a few times in high school, but I always liked English and writing persuasive essays. So when I had the opportunity to start selling for GNC, when at the time I was just pushing carts for Albertsons, uh, you know, I gave it a shot and then basically figured out, Hey, when I have control over my income, which is a commission based job, right? When I have control over my income, I'm a lot happier because then I can just focus on production. And I'm a builder at heart. Like I love to work in construction. So basically if I can build, you know, and, and get paid for what I create, I'm a happy guy. So that was pretty much it. And then when I just figured out how easy it is to not have to put on pants and sell stuff over Zoom, <laughs> I mean, like, I why would you do anything right else? Now. I can't stand up right now. You'll see my boxer shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much same here. So it's like, I mean, why, why would you want to do anything else? Uh, really? It's pretty fun. Yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that too. And then now I learned that you like construction. So next time you're down here, we'll work on some projects at my house. <laughs> yeah, dude, I see you've been doing a lot of renovations and stuff and that, um, uh, great news. I just got approved for my first mortgage. So I'm going to pick up investment awesome. property number one in a couple months or a month to two, depending, but, uh, I'm, I'm itching to get my hands back in some drywall. Oh, it's been man. a while. I'm, I'm, I'm opposite. I'm Indian. I don't know if there's any Indians watching this, but we don't do much construction. <laughs> uh, we, do, we do pretty good delegation though. <laughs> Honestly, but, if it, if it paid enough, I'd still do it. I'd there, to me, there's few feelings of satisfaction that rival being able to go back and look at properties that like I built and know that someone's living there. It's not just a house. It's a home now and it's still there. Right. I love that. Yeah, no, that, that is pretty cool. 
Um, now, leaning off of construction, and congratulations again. I mean, the eight-figure mark, the, the, the investment property, man, you're on the bigger and better things. Um, and it's all because of your, your commitment to improving your language patterns, your English that you mentioned, English over math, uh, and, and being more persuasive. Mm -hmm. uh, so going into the sales context of this, like I know a lot of people own their own marketing agency. They sell for an influencer or a coach or want to be an influencer themselves. And they're, they're really struggling to not get, not just get the, the sales opportunity, just to get the lead. So should we start talking about like, like using social media, like Facebook to generate like that brain pattern that you are the authority to get them into the messenger to a sales call. Will that be appropriate? Sure. Yeah. I love okay. that word. <laughs> Would that be appropriate? How do you say no to that? <laughs> I just wanted um, to put it on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but even before we get into that, like preface, I'm not an organic marketing expert, but I do get the psychological things someone needs to experience so I could teach it better than I even do it. Um, but I love, so I picked this up from listening to Jeremy Miner when he, when he mm -hmm. sells savage that I would consider him a legend. Um, mm -hmm. the word appropriate, like if I were to be like, Hey, do you want to do this? It's really easy to weasel out. But if I were to say, Hey, would it be appropriate if I shared with you what it could look like if we chose to work together to solve this issue? I mean, how do you say no to that? So consider yeah. where soft neutral language like would it be appropriate if i showed you how we could solve that problem together makes it a lot easier for your prospects to say yes uh 100 i mean even this works outside of of selling i guess uh it's communication because i used some sort of languages yesterday when i saw some some girl at a bar and i were talking about uh, Raul's was on the pickup game old fashions we're talking about i said hey i know this place has excellent old fashions would you be against trying one Oh. <laughs> and I'm like boom <laughs> dude no base question right out of the hopper I love that. <laughs> right out of right out the gates so so but but in all seriousness no like i mean it, it's giving their their brain patterns in my opinion like something to like you're asking the same question just more eloquently the other way because now you're guiding yeah. them into the the thought pattern of saying i do need help versus i can figure it out all by myself which no one in the history of of, of time has ever been able to figure out anything by themselves you always need people Oh, yeah. In fact, before we even get into the organic marketing, I th maybe we should just jam on no base questions for a second, because okay. for the people that get it, I mean, they know that this is a super powerful tool to have in your arsenal. But I think there's a lot out there that don't really understand why it's so effective. And I just did a YouTube video on this recently. So like, think about what Raul just said, right? Or, you know, you like, hey, would you be opposed to trying this? the no moves the sale forward. It moves that interaction forward. And contrary to what a lot of like the, you know, the gurus that had their heyday selling used cars back in the eighties, uh, where it was basically believed that I need to yes, my prospect down the line. Now in the information age, like sales resistance is at an all time high. People can do their background research. They, they're not going to be, you know, so easily slimed. In, into an agenda, if that makes sense. They, they need to feel free, smart, and in control. So giving them the ability to say no, but in a way that moves the sale forward, so much more effective. So instead of being like, so Raul, you want to make more money, right? Or like MLMers typically pitch, do you, you keep your uh, options open for additional income streams, right? I think that feels like a trap. I'm going to be like, dude, what the fuck do you got to sell me? <laughs> right, right. But if I were to say something different, like, okay, so are you satisfied with how much money you've been making? No. Well, why not? Now I've got an in, in a much more uh, fluid way to get to what's really going on. Have you noticed well, that too? Yeah. And, and I love what you just mentioned because now it opens the conversation for honesty versus any other horseshit or excuses or whatever that you're right. going to hear and, and feel because there's nothing worse than like knowing you're in a generic conversation. You're like, fuck, now I have to re-angle or whatever it is. Um, and I see that happen a lot where it's like people are trying to push and, and, and almost like a parent saying, kid, you got to go to college. So it's mm -hmm. like pushed upon somebody by force. Um, whereas making it a choice, then you can let them see that, Hey, this may be valuable for you. Um, and if you're open, like you mentioned, open to exploring options, 
I mean, maybe there's something you can learn on a call. Mm. Yeah. You even as simple as like, well, I mean, it sounds like you've got everything figured out, mm-hmm. you know, clearly with an upward inflecting tone. So it invites like a response. You know, hey, it sounds like you've got everything figured out already. Now, in order for the conversation to even proceed, they're going to have to say no. And so yeah. you can get down to what's really going on instead of this, you know, this BS. Like one of my new sales reps was getting stuck in conversation where he's like, I don't know what next question to ask. What's going on? I feel like I'm going brain dead. And it's because he was asking only like yes based questions. Like you want to make more money, right? And social media has been the biggest challenge, right? And so it kept him responsible for thinking of what next to say instead of just leaning back and letting the prospect dump out what's really going on. Yeah, I mean that that's really because I mean you've said this time and time again. If if you say it, they doubt it. If yep. they say it, they own it. Um, and that's the most important part is like leaning them in, like to say their own their own problems. So like when you just mentioned, it sounds like things are going pretty well for you. Um, and then they'll start to start to talk about like what their problem is. Well, I really could use SOPs. Okay, what do you, what what do you mean by that? And then digging down and saying like, well, if you have this in place, would that be the solution that you need to get to that next level? Is this the true bottleneck? Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of just like you mentioned, you're just leaning them into the the pain and the awareness that it's okay to engage with a, with an external human being to go get help and solve the fucking multi-million dollar problem you're having. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's like, well, yeah, I guess I need some more SOPs. Huh. What makes you say that? I guess if, if you didn't, you just let things continue along the same path. I mean, do you honestly see this getting better or worse? You've got so much more leverage there. I love it. We can totally move into the organic marketing stuff though, if you want. I know that was top of mind. No, no, I love, I love that. I mean, just those lines alone in this interview, whoever's watching, if you're here, hashtag live, hashtag replay, and then we'll drop Grant's uh, YouTube channel in here, or you can drop it in the chat. Um, so people can go subscribe. I encourage you guys to subscribe because this guy's been pumping out some serious like content all for free. So you don't have to pay for it. Uh, yeah. But but just those like lines alone of like opening the brain up to dig into like you did it more eloquently. I did it more like a, a little sniperish approach where it was quicker, but you broke it down line by line how it should be done um, yeah. on opening people up because that's where they're just going to be like an advocate of you and talk about how amazing you are as a leader on the phones, whether they buy from you immediately or even never, um, they'll just have a high respect for you where it's not like a fuck off conversation. They'll be thinking about you actively um, on a regular basis and also tagging you in comments um, and that you don't even remember who the person was even. And you're like, oh yeah. shit, I kind of remember talking to that person. So I see that happen quite often um, as well. Um, Dude, but go, but going back to what's, yeah, no, totally. You're building your network. You're building the network at a, uh, person by person. Uh, but you mentioned something about the information age. You want people to know the, as much information as humanly possible before they get to you. So that's where this organic process comes in. Because when, when I started my company in 2004, the thing that I hated the most was being interviewed. And I'm like, why the fuck do you think I have a fucking website? Like, boy, do you, like, <laughs> as, like as, as a business owner, I'm like, why are you filling in my form? And then saying, what is it that you do? I'm like, didn't you have a problem that you typed in on Google? You found our website, you read our website, and then you filled it in. But no, people were, were very impatient even back then. It was just yeah. a matter of like, let me just fill it in and they'll call me. And that's what we do. So we put content in front of them um, and saying, hey, here's an automatic email back. Here's information about us. Here's reviews. Here's screenshots. Here's Google. Here's Yelp, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Because we want the information out there because we want a competitive advantage. And we want them to talk to competitors before us, if possible, um, so we can come back as like the best conversation they're going to have. So mm-hmm. leading back into uh, what Grant was about to say about Facebook organic, um, that's where you can now put out the information to influence the audience. But with the with the kind of uh, what do you call it, the asterisk disclaimer of consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. <clears throat> You know, I I just did a training on this, so it's top of mind. But if if you think about it like this, right, like a sales conversation, typically in the context of what we're talking about, it's one to one. And so you could be amazing at sales like you could be way better than I am because I still got plenty of room to improve. Um, 
But if that's all you're focused on, if all you're focused on is being the best possible salesman and you have any control over the marketing whatsoever, but those two departments aren't talking, then you're going to be way less effective than you could be. Because while a sales call is one-to-one, every post you make is one-to-many. And so what I do, because I'm the sales manager uh, for High Impact Coach, where we help fitness pros you know, go full-time online, anytime we have an objection or a concern or a challenge come up on calls, I take note of that because instead of just getting better at handling that on the spot, what I want to do is start pre-handling that in the content leading up to the calls so that I could potentially prevent objections from even coming up in the first place. So if you're not you know, using sales calls as feedback to adjust the marketing, well, that's like running a full-on organization where you've got a marketing and a sales department, but neither has any communication with each other. Like clearly it wouldn't be that effective. So the majority of my content and the stuff that we put out in like our private group and stuff that's aimed to be conversion content is actually pre-handling objections that come up on a regular basis in the content itself. And the same thing, like when I'm on a sales call, when someone says yes, I don't get all excited. Like, okay, sweet. It's going to be the most amazing thing in the world. Grab your card and I'll get you all set up. Mm -hmm. When someone says yes, the next thing out of my mouth every single time is why, why is it a yes for you? Because that answer also then becomes the next piece of content. And you can see if you're adjusting your content based on the concerns that prevent sales or the concerns that you overcame that would have present prevented the sale, even if you, you know, did everything else right. And you're doubling down on what works. You end up with like just a stream of pretty much pre-sold prospects coming to the phone. And you don't even have to be a great salesman if you have pre-sold prospects coming to the phone. I love that. I mean, that's, that, that's exactly what we do is our, our clients give us our content. So yeah. you're, you're listening, you're just actively listening and looking for the signs. And, but you're right. Marketing and sales have to be intertwined um, because like on, on my team, like Cody, who you already know, he does like a he's lot a of, stud. yeah, he does like complete stuff. I think he's watching this uh, right now. What up, Cody? I, yeah. He asked if I got a haircut. I actually literally had long hair that I can ponytail up before this call. I got it fresh cut for you. <laughs> oh, today? I was like, like where's the flow? I forgot about, to ask about you about half it. Half an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. We were looking straight mountain man on our last one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I know. Like not, I had not one compliment in a year with that hair. So I took that as market feedback. <laughs> brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Way to listen. You're brutal a market friends. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, but yeah, no, we, our feedback loop, just so you guys know, is like when we get like, if leads are too low down the funnel, we do one of two things, change the, change the fucking content, or we just keep it as top of con top of funnel where there no call is going to be necessary, or we can get people to be indoctrinated and lean on them with our ads or our content out there. So we don't want them to call us. We just want them to know us and respect us or like us. And then when we hit them with our retargeting, then we can lean into the conversion content, booking a call, watching a VSL or whatever it may be. So people more, are more inclined to even know what we do, realize that, Hey, if we do work together, could we both mutually benefit? Um, and then there's also, a price attached to it kind of like tony mm -hmm. robbins has done so well like you know when you you know like upw you know date with destiny you know business mastery and they all come with different prices that's kind of like the goal of what we all want for our own businesses is that people you want people to know what your pricing is in a range maybe if you change it or it goes up it goes down it fluctuates or whatever um that's cool but it, as long as it, like me me personally like i know dennis Yu, who's like a brilliant marketer in facebook world um, he spent like over a billion dollars in ads. He's just like, publish your fucking prices on your website, dude. It's like, it'll just make it so much easier. Mm. It's like, it'll just be way so, so much easier. Just publish the fucking prices so they know exactly what it is. So when you do get on the phone, you already know it's somebody who knows what the price is. Now it's just a matter of paying full or financing. Uh, we haven't done that, um, quite frankly, for a lot of our stuff, but for our lower ticket stuff, when we're working with like certain, like when we work with our marketing clients, like the local businesses or whatever, we do have some of the prices on there as our foot in the door pricing. So we can say mm -hmm. buy this cheaper stuff that has high solution value for what you're looking for. And then we build upon a relationship. And some of this shit, like, like I remember like a lot of the clients that I first started out with, we would sell them a $150 little fucking banner ad for wherever they're at advertising. Um, sometimes we just didn't know or care quite frankly. Um, but 
that would lean into like a five thousand or eight thousand dollar a month relationship over 150 bucks. Sort of like, damn, dude, the low low barrier to entry keeps our confidence high, our cash flow up, um, and then we just send them into exploring other options. And one of the things I tell every, every single person, whether I'm in a sales call before we close them or after we've closed them um, as a client, I'll say, hey, would you would you even be open to recommendations that my team may think would grow your business even further. Mm. I've never heard somebody say, no, don't give me any racks. Um, yeah. No, I'm cool with say, where I'm at a hundred percent. Never plan on growing again. Yeah. And that's kind of like an upsell model, be either if you have to use it in the right time, I, I typically use it mostly after the sale. Um, but sometimes when I know the sale is going to go through, but I'm not sure, I think it's going to go, conversation is going to go longer. I'll pull that out earlier. So then I can say, Hey, let's start here. And I'll make the recommendations at the appropriate time. But then it gives me the open mic to call the customer back and say, hey, remember how we spoke that I would make recommendations? Can I, can I snag your ear for about 15 to 20? Because I need you to pay attention. Mm. And, they'll, they'll, and then I, 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 like, I'll, I'll, we'll go into some, some scripting or role play in a second. But like, I will just say, hey, look, I'm going to be acting as two people for you right now. Your vendor, because that's really what I am. But then I'm also going to be on your other shoulder acting as like the person of counsel. Like, what should you actually do? So mm -hmm. I'm literally telling them, I'm like, let me, Rahul's going to pitch Rahul right now. Rahul, here's what I want. Uh, here's what I want Grant to do. And here's why I want it. And then I'll go back. I'll say, okay, now let me go to Rahul too. And I'll say, all right, well, what impact will I have on our bottom line? When mm -hmm. do we see results? Why do you think now's the right time? So I'm, ask, I'm, I'm actually just pitching myself back and forth sometimes on these calls. So she's at the, the client or whoever it is, is just like, what the fuck's going on? And I'll say, well, I, I, I'm like, hey, w would you be against going forward and trying this out for the next six months? Um, and I'm like, but if you want to ask me as the vendor, I'm obviously recommending it because I only recommend things I see fit. And then as the counsel, because I'm playing two roles, I would say it's worth a go to see where this goes. And uh, Dude. have you ever heard anyone ever do that before? No, this is the first, but. I mean, I'll, I'll do an element of that where I'm, you know, in a sales conversation with someone and I can clearly tell, you know, based on facial cues and just their energy that this is something where, um, you know, they're feeling a bit hesitant, a little bit fearful, questioning, or maybe even jaded because they've gone through things that were framed similarly and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll straight up and be like, and look, man, for a second, let's just take, you know, this offer off the table and look at what are the best and worst case scenarios that you're going to run up against, you know, and I'll paint it for him. I'm like, Hey, worst case scenario, it looks like this. Would that kill you? Would you die? Okay. Now, you know, best case scenario, this is possible. Does that make sense? Could you see yourself in that? Okay, cool. Well, knowing that in even the worst case scenario, you wouldn't die. In the best case scenario, it'd be incredible. And in the more realistic sense, it'd probably look like this. Just, I mean, you tell me, what do you think would be an appropriate place to, you know, go from here? Because everyone's got that internal narrative going, right? Like, and unless we know how to help to control that or help move that in a positive direction, most of our internal narratives are geared towards the negative. That's mm -hmm. just how we are as people. And so you got to know that if you're in a position of influence and help someone to lessen the pain, I guess, of the worst case possible scenario and, and show them that like the inaction itself would be worse than the worst case scenario of moving forward. Because like, hey, even if you make $0, you'll learn. You learn exactly what doesn't work. And so you can shortcut the process going forward. Chances yeah. are that won't happen, but I want to be fully transparent with you and say, it's possible, but do you want to know the way that you can prevent that from happening? Yeah, tell me. You do the work. Because I can't guarantee you're going to do the work, but I can guarantee if you do, the process works for people exactly like you, and I don't see it being any different. But it's your choice to make. Um, who's listening to that out there? I mean, there's... There's I just went on a rant. <laughs> about, no, I, I mean, I love your tonality. I love the pausing. So I didn't know where to jump in because <laughs> I wanted to make sure I gave the right space uh, because, yeah, no, that, that was beautiful. Um, give it up for Grant there. Let's get some hearts. Let's get some hashtag lives. I got to see who's even on here. 
Yeah, uh, drop your questions below too. This is a live stream. This isn't pre-recorded. Yeah. So whatever's top of mind, we may address. And it yeah, may be the right. one thing that makes all the difference. Yeah, 100%. So there's a, bu- a bunch of you on here. So I see that we got John, we got Alvin. Um, oh, Alvin, yes, I got a haircut. Um, yeah, I lost 10 pounds from the haircut too. Uh, <laughs> okay, Mario Pajaj, Jeff Lopez. What up, Jeff? We got to connect at some point. Um, hey, we got Mario on here? We got Mario, Super Mario. Too. Yeah, Mario is fucking awesome. Um, that's some gold right there, basically. Guess. Let's see why not. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if there's, uh, let me see. That's some gold right there. They say yes, and you say why. Not where's the digits? Yeah, not the mm. credit card. It's too, it's too early. You want you want them to justify it. Um, like yeah. I mean, because that's important. So if somebody like like you feel this is the solution for you. And then, the first time I ever saw that used, by the way, was when I watched timeshares being sold. And if you ever want to see someone that's an absolute savage when it comes to closing sales, watch people sell timeshares. That is next level. I'd say that's even above door to door like solar sales. I mean, the stuff that we do selling coaching, consulting, agency stuff online by comparison to selling timeshares, in my opinion, is playing on easy mode. And so anyway, I listened to the guy, you know, he, he's taking this girl through like multiple and multiple loops. And she finally is like, you know what? I think I'll do it. And he, with the stone cold face goes, why? Just fast response. And I could tell it was a programmed thing he had in his brain. And so she just starts saying, well, I mean, I guess this and that and, and this too, and, and maybe even that. And he just goes, oh, I agree with you. So let's get it done. And he moved right into it. But it doesn't just give you fuel for the content, like we said, but it also ties your prospect down, which is actually going to go a long way in terms of preventing refunds and improving satisfaction in the program itself. Most people don't realize like closing a sale isn't just getting the dollars in the door. It's pre-framing them to be successful with the product or in the program. That's huge. Yeah, you, you you nailed it because that that has that a long bandwidth uh, of time that when when you when you get them sold, they say it, they believe it, then they're more likely to take take action and show up for themselves mm-hmm. uh, because now they've just fully committed uh, yeah. and now they fully justified. I love I gotta watch like if you have that timeshare person like Skype or not Skype. Uh, facebook messenger it's in me i wish i wish i literally went to a presentation because they there was a free helicopter ride in it and when i was done i just kind of hung out and and watched what people were doing because you know it was basically like they had a little lunch area so you could be eating stuff and you know they didn't kick you out and so i was like right next to a table and i heard this guy and i was like damn can i hire you to sell my stuff because you'd probably close a higher rate than i would Oh yeah. Like I, I've, I've only been through one time share experience. I think I was too young and too shy. Even I didn't, I didn't talk much back then. Um, mm-hmm. And I was still, I was probably like even 19. I didn't really, I'd never done sales back then. Uh, so I didn't t- literally talk to people that weren't like my immediate friends, but, um, but yeah, the timeshare guy, like, and my dad's like pretty bright when it comes to investments and strategies and business. Mm-hmm. And like, we were there for the free meal and the free boat ride. And, <laughs> and they get you. They get you. Yeah. And uh, the guy was fantastic. He even took us on the, he came on the boat ride because he wanted to lean in and try to see if he can close. Um, but he almost had my dad. I'm like, dude, because it made sense the way they position it. I'm like, it, it's, it's whatever. I don't remember the pitch, but yeah, I mean, they're, they are fucking good and they, they keep it so conversational and it's not seller be sold. It's just like, like they're just getting, to, it's almost like talking to a friend at some point. Um, mm-hmm. the way they've been trained. So I agree. Timeshare people, um, you're not the first person that brought that up to me. I, or maybe you were on the last interview. I mean, maybe, maybe it Might was have you. Been. Yeah. Well, and on that point, like this kid was pulling up his phone, you know, and like showing, because this was basically selling timeshares. It's a vacation thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the whole premise. And so he like pulls up his phone. And he's like, oh yeah, I mean, and just to show you like, this is us in Prague and this is us in Egypt. And like, look how happy she was. I would do anything to see her happy. You would too, wouldn't you? Like all these things. And so a lot, what I also picked up was creating a two path conversation so that you feel like there's options, but you're cutting off everything else that's possible. Like imagine we're on a sales call you know, there's an infinite amount of things we could do. I could buy, I could object and delay. I could hang up the phone. I could be like, I'm not, there's a whole bunch of things you could do. 
But what he did that I, I really learned a lot from was like, I mean, honestly, like if you never planned a vacation again, this doesn't make sense. Don't even consider it. But if you planned a vacation, even just once or twice every couple of years, it just makes sense. You would agree, right? Look at the numbers. And so he's, he's boxing you into a corner where, yeah, you have a free will. You have the choice of where you want to go. But it's, it's almost like Grant Cardone says, like reducing to the ridiculous. It's like, hey, if you never plan on taking a vacation again, it, dude, we can wrap up. There's, you don't need this whatsoever. It's not for you. So it's almost a takeaway. Yeah. But of course, I'm on a vacation again in my whole life. Are you kidding me? So he boxes me. Well, no, I'm on a vacation. Well, okay, well, clearly you can see that based on the numbers, it, it only makes sense. So I don't want you to do anything you don't want to do. I just want you to save money. So since you plan on vacationing again in your lifetime, wouldn't it make sense to save some money in the process so you could reinvest in you know, the meals and the entertainment that you're going to have with your wife to help her get the most out of the experience? I mean, it's just, it's savage. I love listening to sales calls and conversations. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's great. I love it. You said something that reminded me of Chris Voss too. I don't know what it was. It was early in the conversation. I was just trying to bring Chris Voss's name to my brain um I don't probably know a lot i learned a lot from him like no based questions labeling mirroring to get guarded closed off prospects to open up and share the hidden information that they don't want to disclose like mm -hmm. those tools are ninja tricks mm -hmm. was it maybe something like that that inspired the thought i think when you mentioned control like he mentions like you always want like because he's dealing with like bank robbers and hostage negotiations so when he's negotiating it's like hey you want to give the person on the other side full control while you control what they're going to say, if that makes sense. So like when you mentioned like we box that, that, that timeshare person, like gives like basically reduces to the ridiculous, which is smart. I mean, it makes sense. Like, what are you never vacation? What are you never going to plan on losing weight again? You're never going to go to a gym again. You're never going to like make another sale in your business again. So it's like, but those are all good anchors of like giving them back control. Mm -hmm. um, of the conversation so they can actually say it yeah i think even, that's what it was even in terms of like hey man I don't, I don't know what led you to this call but like if this is just the last call you ever plan on having because you're shutting down your business's doors and calling it quits cool like let's pop a bottle and celebrate your success because you must be riding off into the sunset oh no you you plan on keeping it going well okay well what brought you to the call today I guess what has you here looking for information instead of out there, you know, living it up on your yacht. What's really going on? <laughs> I love that. I love it. I, I learned out about it. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, well, we, we may have to go and uh, go to Mexico and do a timeshare just to hear some pitches and buy some timeshares now. <laughs> now you got me motivated. I'm going to have to go Google it. We're probably going to get hit with ads now that we're talking about it. I know. Uh, Dude, how fun would it be to like, you know, get those Google glasses or something like a hidden body cam and just, you know, show what it's like in the real world. I mean, I just tasted this new beer at this place that I really, I'm blown away. It's, it's amazing. It basically did a collaboration with a donut company, yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada. It's 14% and it's a stout, but it tastes like you're drinking coffee and chocolate at the same time. It's amazing, but they don't sell it in growlers. And so I just had a conversation with the girl. I was like, hey, I can completely appreciate it. And by the way, I didn't catch your name. What, what was it? Kelsey. Oh, Kelsey. Well, look, I, I don't want to get you in trouble by any means, but you know, this it's so good. I was just hoping that you might possibly be able to bottle up a growler for me. And the reason they don't is because it's such a high percentage of alcohol. But she's like, you know what? I guess it's not really a big deal. We're just not supposed to. So let, let me ring you up. It, yeah. It's so simple when you just, empathize with a person, but Hey, I can completely appreciate you probably can't do this, but it would mean the world to me. If you might consider a way that you could possibly make it work. No, this is great. This is why Grant gets free upgrades in his hotels. <laughs> I had to pay the last time I went to Vegas. She, she got me. She was good. She's like, Hey, if you don't really care about the view at all, this room is going to be perfect. So like I had got a suite right at the, Starts with a V. I, I like them because they have sunken lid. Uh Venetian. Venetian. Yeah. If you go to Vegas, the Venetian's a nice place to stay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I like I get this suite. You know, I'm like, sweet, this is perfect. We get there and, and she hits me with this. Oh, that's a great room. It 
I mean, you don't really care about a view, right? Like you, you're just going to spend most of your time on the strip. So, well, no, I actually really like having a good view. That's something I look for. She goes, oh, well, I mean, if that's the case, I, I have a couple other rooms available that I could show you that seem like they might be up your alley. So I go, okay, of course, show me. And <laughs> she paints the picture and there we go. I spend twice as much just to get the room that I wanted. But that's awesome. take, take note of that because, you know, if you can elevate the value, the price just goes with it. Like I won't pay 20 bucks for a shitty steak, but I'll pay 200 bucks for a steak that I believe is going to be delicious. Mm hmm. Right. So a lot of people are, are concerned with, oh, my offer is too high priced and people won't want it. Well, if you don't see the value, clearly they won't. But if you can help them to understand how valuable what you have to sell really is, a lot of times the price barrier handles itself. I, I'm going down so many weird rabbit holes. I'm caffeinated today. So no, no that's good. I'm glad you're caffeinated because I'm decaffeinated right now. I, I do need coffee. Um, but no, Injecting my are, energy your way. Yeah, no, I love it. And uh, whoa, whoa, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> um, anyways, the no, these these are all small like tidbits of nuggets that people can write down and use. And, and what we're talking about is like, this is just general in life. Like it has nothing to do with just selling your own product or it does have everything to do with selling your own product and services. But also you can use this outside in other areas, um, whether it's even getting your, your, your car fixed or an upgraded hotel an upgrade with a, with a, uh, uh, airline or whatever it may be. Um, it's all neutral language and persuasion and, and kind of asking good questions at the right time. But do you want to kind of like, you mind if I put you on the spot and do maybe a little role play? Oh man. Hit me. Yeah, let's see where it goes. No right. promises. And no, if you no guys have a, yeah. we, we got to drop an engagement thing for uh, for the good old okay. Facebook algorithm. If you've appreciated even just one simple thing that maybe myself or the G himself, Raul, has dropped today, do us a favor. Smack the like button. Maybe yeah. drop a comment on your main takeaway because when you're an active participant in your own education, you get a lot more out of it. So without any further ado, let's get back to your agenda. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, what, what my ninja hack is, is when I'm, when I'm on somebody else's Facebook live, like I don't want to have like a million Google docs of notes after notes after notes. So I actually just take my notes in their live stream. So I'll just do my takeaways. Number one, other people see it. Then you start to build up a, a, an audience. Mm -hmm. uh, but then two, the person who did the live really fucking appreciates it. So they remember you um, and they'd be more willing to communicate with you more freely. Um, but then also, I'm also doing it selfishly because when I type it, um, it I have a tendency to remember it uh, a little bit easier than just listening to it and then saying, oh, I'll watch the replay again and then do notes later. So that's my a million active, percent. My, my, my little ninja hack for you guys. So if you guys, somebody wants to take notes, write some nuggets that you've learned, um, let's do it. So I see that there's nine of you. Can we get some hearts, nine hearts at least? Nine hearts from each of you, maybe nine comments from each of you. Um, so we can bring Grant back because we're about to role play right now. And this is going to be, I've role played with him. And I mean, I, I have a tendency to buy, Oh, PD, <laughs> there he is. Oh man. PD. What up? Um, when Lambo, when Lambo, um, uh, anyways. So like, I mean, I don't, I, I might even buy what Grant's selling and I'm not even a, I'm going to have him sell his own product of fit, fitness thing. Uh, cause last time, he, he, he got me pretty good. I was like, man, this is fucking great. I remember when we did that. Yeah, the fitness sales role play. I was a little rusty on that, but I think I still had you. I think I still had you. You did. I, I would have bought. I would have been your buyer if I was a fitness bro. There we go. All right. So you want to you wanna call me? <laughs> Wait, what, do you, what do you want me to sell? What do you, you tell me. You sell me something. Sell me the art behind your, your wall, your fitness program, something. Oh, my God. This is this is this funny. is hard to do, by the way, guys. This is on the spot. Like I didn't tell him I was gonna put it on the spot like this. I just didn't want him <laughs> to ask me first, <laughs> so I had to get in front. All of right, it. fuck it. Let's just have some fun. I, I have done a lot worse. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, it, is this Raul? It is. Who's this? Hey, hey, Raul. This is just Grant. I I actually happened to cross your profile, uh, and, and you were doing a live video recently. Um, and I figured I'd just reach out because I I noticed something. Do you have a couple quick seconds? I don't want to interrupt. Is now a bad time? No, I got a few minutes. Okay. 
Okay. Well, I mean, the reason for the call is I noticed that you mentioned something about that picture behind you feeling kind of outdated and, and like it belongs maybe in your parents' house. It, did I hear that right? Or am I totally off base? No, you, you heard that right. Okay. Well, I, just out of curiosity, do you mind telling me what, what you don't love about it? it? It seems like a pretty cool picture to me. Yeah. I mean, as you can see it behind me, it, it, it just doesn't match like a, my style or my age. Um, I mean, just a little bit old school for me. If it looks a little antiquated to me, that's that's kind of why I mentioned that. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I could tell by the hat, man. I mean, you're you're pretty hip. Uh, do you do you live in LA? I do. Okay, cool, man. I, I I've only been a couple times myself, but it's pretty <laughs> sweet. But anyway, enough about me. You, when you were talking about how you don't necessarily love that picture, wh what kind of art do you typically like? You know what? I mean, the one behind you is pretty cool, but like I'm, I would say if you've ever been to the W Hotel um, or the Cosmo Hotel. Oh, dude, I love that Cosmo. I like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I have no idea if this would be of any interest to you, but we're, we're actually moving in about a month from now. And I mean, this thing's dope. I, I love it, but it doesn't really fit the decor of our, our next place. It just out of curiosity, could you see this behind you when you're doing live streams? Because, I mean, it seems like it might be a pretty cool prop. Can you move your head to the right? Yeah, let me get give me a fat mug out the way. That's pretty damn cool. I like it. Well, I mean, I, I do too, but what do you like about it? I mean, the colors, the lion, it kind of matches like our our brand, if you will. Like what we think. Hmm. You, you guys are like the the lion vibe. Like go out there, get your prey, win the day kind of guys. Kind of win the day kind of guys. Not get your prey, but not overly aggressive. But win the day. <laughs> Fair enough. And maybe that was a little subtle test. But um, okay. Well, again, I, I have no idea if this would be of any interest to you. But I don't. I don't really have a whole lot of use for it. I mean, what do you say? Like, I, I spent like a hundred bucks on it. What do you think it'd be worth? I mean, I thought it was worth more than a hundred, quite frankly. Really? If you had to guess, what what would you think something like that would go for? I mean, if it was at like like an art show, like a one of those like parking lot art shows, I'd probably say like four fifty. But if it was at like Pier One Imports, then I can probably see it like probably, I'd probably guess it would be two hundred bucks. Damn! Wow. Well, I guess I got a sweet deal on it then. In, yeah. Speaking of sweet yeah. deals, I mean. I'm happy to hook it up with you if uh, if you think it might fit your office decor. I mean, what do you say? Seventy five bucks? W would you want it? Could you do sixty and deliver it? And if I said yes, you, if, and you mentioned you like construction, so I need you to put it up. I mean, yeah, I, I, I do enjoy that. I'll tell you what. It, if I said yes, would you be in to take it today? Done. You have All it right. on my today. You got your 60 bucks today. Let's do it. Deal. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm, surprised <so> you, <laughs> I'm surprised you went with the art thing, but we literally just so you guys know out there, I, I talked about how I'm actually sitting at my parents' house and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have some old school painting right behind me. So he, he brought that out from like the pre-context of our conversation before we went live. So that was pretty, that was pretty funny. <laughs> so let's break apart. I mean, was yeah. that perfect? Not by any means, but yeah. what were, what were some of the things that you noticed I was at least trying to do? Well, you were just asking, I, I mean, I looked at it as like, you gave me, you, you were respectful of my space and my time. Um, you, heard my live and you referenced my own words back to me about a bottleneck or a pain that I have, which is behind me. Um, so you found a mutual uh, grounds, I guess, uh, of, of like, Hey, I'm in actively want you artwork. Um, and you uh, had open any questions like you're being polite or would it be appropriate? Would it be okay? Like you're just getting permission. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the most important things to me. And you're allowing me to have an option um, of going like an option more so to go forward then so to go backward so that's that's what i that i took away from it oh yeah and those are huge points so like i was trying to use some context you know referencing words that he said in a piece of content 
right ahead of the conversation. Um, I was definitely trying to, uh, and in a super quick way, but associate your identity with the lion because people will buy so much uh, easier, I guess I should say. They'll buy a lot easier if you can associate them moving forward with your product or your service to the identity that they already hold for themselves. Like that's right. actually a huge thing. Like, so you seem to me like the kind of guy that even when things are going well, always pushes for a next level of success. Yeah, I totally am. Okay, well, I could appreciate then that you'd want to continue growing your business, but I guess I'm curious then by how much in the next 90 days. So I'm associating an identity so I can hold you to that standard. Um, what I did there at the end was a little bit of a, a tie down. You know, I'm like, if I yeah. say yes, are you ready to go today? Instead of just being like, yeah, okay, I'll take it. You know right. what I mean? No, no, that's definitely, I, I, I love that. I mean, it's just because when you're in a negotiation, like the, the like you'll lose, you'll be negotiating against yourself if you don't have the commitment of the other party. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because I've, like I've done that so many, like I, when I was like younger, like both ways, I've been on both sides of the coin where somebody's like, Hey, uh, we'd go forward with you if you can do it for X. And I say, no problem. Let's do it. And mm -hmm. they're like, okay, we'll let you know. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, we just negotiated. How do you do that? And then I've also been on the opposite end where I've been that, that, that person that, that walked away because they didn't tie me down into it. They didn't give me the option that I couldn't do it now. So I think that's, that's the important part there too. But one question that I liked about that um, was when you moved out of the way, you asked something that prompted me to say, I like it. And then you asked me right back, what do you like about it? Mm -hmm. And then, then I had to think, I did actually tell you what I liked about it. So you're getting that identity frame back on me. Yeah. One other thing too, that I, I try to slide in there uh, is mental imagery. And I just picked up a book on this. It's called imagine reading this book. And this is, it's funny because like a lot of the stuff I'm reading in there, I already knew, but it was because I was taught by some really savage sales legends, but basically getting your prospect to envision themselves with your solution or in your solution. Like as an example uh, that the book gives that's really solid, <clears throat> two scenarios. You're buying a car, right, in both scenarios. In, in number one, you have a base model car and you have to check the boxes of the upgrades that you want. In scenario two, you're buying the same car and they show you the fully loaded model and you uncheck the boxes of the things that you don't want. In situation two, sales far exceeded number one, because instead of adding to what they already saw themselves getting, they saw themselves basically in the cream of the crop car. And so they had more ownership over the things that they were letting go of. So I was like, well, I mean, could you even see that working as part of your, you know, your, your house? Like, could you see that on the wall behind you? And so it's a question, but as soon as you start seeing yourself mm -hmm. in it, like, can you see yourself being successful with this model? Mm -hmm. You know, can, can you envision yourself, you know, working 20 hours a week from the beach, sipping Mai Tais, closing sales? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. Cool. Do you want to make that possible? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, what was the name of the book? It's called Imagine Reading This Book. And I think it's new. The, the yeah. cover is literally, it looks like a hand pulling back the cover of a book. I, I, saw, I saw it on your stories. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably send it to my brother-in-law to buy it for me on, on his Amazon account or his, whatever that is, uh, the Audible account. What, do yeah. you not have Prime yourself? I, I don't have Prime. I'm old school, man. Like I'm not, I'm not, I don't buy shit on Amazon. I honestly take a screenshot, send it to my buddy. He, he may be, he's actually on his way over to my house. Um, and he just buys it for me. Oh, so that's hilarious. I have good friends like that. I probably spent like eight grand on his account this year. So, you, Oh, actually, that's a good point. We could jam on that for the last like two minutes because uh, you, cool. you brought up low ticket stuff and that mm -hmm. really helping with upsells. Um, Amazon Prime is a business model that really captured my attention for the reason uh, that one, I mean, they have people paying on a monthly basis. It's MRR, it's dependable, predictable revenue. Mm -hmm. And it increases a company's valuation by, I mean, orders of magnitude. If you ever read the automatic customer, they've got the math broken down. I'm not the math guy, but it suffices to say a lot. But 
even more so than that stability and the consistency of that income, they find that people who have an Amazon Prime account spend a lot more on the platform than people who don't. And the reason for that is because you already have a little bit of skin in the game. And so naturally, when it comes time to buy something else, where do you go? The place where you've already got a little bit of skin in the game versus some complete, you know, mom and pop random. So I actually resisted Amazon Prime for quite a while because I was like, I don't need it. I'll pay for the shipping. It's fine. I don't order that much stuff until I got an Amazon Prime free trial. So I get it all set up, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward a couple months down the road, I order some shit off Amazon like every other day now. And I can literally see myself falling suit with the patterns that I already knew were going to happen, but I still do it and I'm okay with it. And so what you mentioned earlier about having that kind of low ticket front end offer and making that dead simple to go further, it's kind of like Jordan Belfort says in his book, like, um, you know, is this going to make you rich? No. Is it going to make you broke? Also, no. But what it will do is serve as a benchmark for the future business that we'll be doing together. Right. So powerful. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I, I love low ticket to high ticket or high ticket straight away. It doesn't really matter what you term it. Um, uh, then in what context high and low is to you. But I mean, some of our funnels or our, our like, back in the days before we ran like funnels, click funnels wasn't even there yet. Um, we would just sell, like I said, lower ticket, uh, items that we can bring a pain out of somebody by not experiencing what we had to say first. So like what I was telling was banner ads. So I was literally cold calling. It wasn't like I had leads. I had, I just started a company with a cell phone and no office, no laptop yet, no nothing. And we would just go on like to a friend's house. He had a computer. We just use his internet and his telephone or our cell phones. And we just look for people with banner ads. And then we click it and we saw that it would either go to a dead page or some shitty website. And we would say, hey, like, I, I understand that you have this ad and that's the reason for my call. Do you have a, a quick minute? And I'll say, yes. I'll be like, cool. Did you know that if you made some improvements to that ad, you'd probably see a significant click through rate go up by 10 to 40%. Would you be interested if I could show you how? And I'll say, then I'll say, well, we designed these things. And I noticed we didn't design yours. You mm -hmm. may have got a template or gone elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, then they'll say, well, what does it cost? I mean, we didn't like our first banner we sold. We didn't know what's the price of that because we didn't know how to make banners. We would just say like, well, let's just sell it and see what happens and we'll figure it out. And uh, we sold first one for 500 bucks and then immediately went on Google, found a designer for $25 and was like, holy shit. Like mm. if somebody can easily pay 500 bucks. Some, then we raised it to 800, had friction, brought it down to 500, then a bunch of competitors came out. Um, and, and the unique part about one, one of the relationships, we ended up doing everything in-house at the end of the day and just hiring all the designers. But one thing that was unique about value positioning is that there was, there was, when we were being referred by some companies, they had to legally refer, or based on their legal compliance department, they had to refer to three vendors. They put us at the top of the list so we'd be the first choice because we knew a bunch of the salespeople. Um, wow. and, but the number three or number two person, somebody underneath us, we were actually outsourcing our ads to that person. Mm. So we, I negotiated with that person. I said, hey, they were charging 20 or $30 an ad. We were charging 150 to 275 an ad, uh, but we were using the same solution provider. So one guy was charging 25 and we were charging whatever, two, two, up to 275. Um, the what I negotiated was, when I order from you, I want to have 24 to 48 hour turnaround time. But when other people were referred to them, they ordered, they had to order online um, and they had to wait 10 days. So I just negotiated Ooh. expedited service. Yeah. There you go. Dude, I will pay so much more for some shit to get to me quick. Yeah. Like, I'll pay like double for depending on what it is. I mean... Yeah, but I can't really think of any situation. I'm so impatient, and most people are. We have such short attention spans. If you can get same day shipping or next day shipping versus a week from now, a lot of times people will pay a lot more. So think about oh, yeah. that as it relates to your product, your service. How can you, even if you cost more, position the value you know, in accordance with how consumers work today? We are an instant gratification society. So how can you get someone that fast start or those quick wins in your program? Because that makes it so much easier to sell. Oh yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, even, even just like going to a restaurant, we went there the other night and uh, no reservations, nice restaurant. 
where you need reservations and they're like, Oh, it's going to be like two hour, like something ridiculous. I mean, for at least to us, it's ridiculous because we're, we're fucking impatient. Yep. And we're like, we're like, <laughs> We're like, all right, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm going to give you, we're going to see that table. We're just going to sit down there. And we just, at the same time, we just handed her a hundred bucks and then deal done. <laughs> we're like, all right, we'll, we'll expedite this because they're not waiting two hours to eat here and I don't want to go somewhere else. Oh my so, God. I love that. Yeah. But, Boss but move. yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so those are, those are, some, but yeah, but then, I mean, we, we strategically do certain things too. So because we go back to that restaurant over and people remember you, then it's inherent saying, oh, they're here, go faster be better service, better waiter, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, so those yeah. are some of the, some of the long-term moves of, of, of spending stupid money if you're going to spend it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's like the whole cheers thing, right? You want to go where everybody knows your name. When you have that established relationship on the front end, you typically get treated better than, uh, well, I live in a beach town, right? So there's two, there's two people that live in this beach town. If you, if you, you know, talk to any of the locals, there's Lokes and there's Kooks. Lokes get the best pricing on everything. Awesome service because you're a local. We know you. We know who you are. But if you're a kook, you're not from around here. The, the level of service is completely different. And yeah. I'm not here to argue whether that's right or wrong. It just is a fact of how we we do business as people. You know, you're gonna yeah. get treated better when you're on a personal face, you know, face to face, first name basis with someone. So if you can have those front end things, like for me, a masterclass, I'll sell. A forty-seven and ninety-seven dollar masterclass, right? That addresses a one very specific small part of someone's problem, and that makes back-end upsells cake, cake. It's like, well, you experienced clearly ten times more value than what you, uh, you know, paid for. Any part of you wonder what you would have to stand to gain if you were to, you know, pay a little bit more? Well, I nope. think you're right. Yeah, there's a whole lot more to gain. Do you want me to walk you through what it could look like? Totally. easy hundred uh, percent that's that, so low ticket to high tickets one thing i mean but whatever it is if you guys have questions about what that is or or any any kind of issues with a sales question drop it in the comments here and we'll do our best to answer it later um and who knows maybe you'll help maybe we'll go live on it um and and, and answer your very specific question or objection or one place where you feel like you're stuck in the sales process um, because when, when, when you're stuck in the sales process, we're talking about how marketing and sales need to align. Uh, you got to dissect each step, like what, like each part of the process of how a bottleneck even occurred versus just assume it's one thing or the other. Um, so just a tip is record your calls, um, and listen to them. It's your, it's your tape, like Michael Jordan watched film, Kobe Bryant watched film. If you want to be good, you don't have to be goats like them, but if you want to be better or want more for yourself, I would suggest recording it listening to it it's going to be awkward but that's the point is because mm-hmm. you want to find where you fuck up and, and and solve for that otherwise you'll be possibly doing the same thing over and over and then you may not get a different result oh yeah well if you do the same thing over and over again expecting a different result that is quite literally einstein's definition of drop it below yeah. insanity if you want different results exactly. do something different so yeah, I listen to my own calls a couple times a week at least, and I listen to sales reps of mine, you know, calls every day. And I actually learn more. If I'm being honest, I've learned more just from listening to my own and other people's sales calls from the perspective of the consumer than I've ever learned from a sales coaching program. And I've been through quite a few because I want to see what's out there. So you yeah, take nothing I, else from this. Listen to your damn calls. Critique yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Even even like this right here, like I learned something new. I learned a new way to ask a different question, a different verbiage. So uh, mm-hmm. and even listening like Ben, if you're listening to here, I don't know if you're on my profile listening or not, but um, shout out to Ben. This dude had some fucking, I've been listening to his calls. He's been fucking crushing the calls, his questions, his tonality. And it's because we do a shitload of fucking role play. We do, we're putting, we're simulating, it's like practice or scrimmages, um, if you're a sports enthusiast. Um, so we're scrimmaging so we can be prepared for the actual real calls. Uh, the more we prepare, the closer we are to, uh, or a degree higher of success. And the opposite is also true. We can never reach a pinnacle in sales. It's always going to keep right rising up and up and up because consumer behavior changes too over time. Mm-hmm. Um, and competitors come in and people start saying the same shit over and start sounding like very common uh, when they hear similar language patterns. So you kind of constantly have to elevate and elevate and elevate kind of like, 
like a slam dunk contest. Like if they were all doing fucking windmills, it'd be pretty damn boring. So they innovate slightly and then it creates shock and awe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I like how you relate it to that. If you never watch your own game film, you have no idea what you're even doing. And here's a good example. You know, if, if you've ever listened to yourself on a video that you didn't know was being recorded of you, chances are you were like, whoa, is that me? Do I sound like that? And so it, it's funny because the same thing I learned when I'm, you know, I play acoustic guitar, right? And the way that the guitar sounds from this perspective up here as you're playing is completely different than how people hear it in front of you. So the same thing applies. You might think you're saying everything you need to, asking great questions, you got perfect tonality, but unless you ever listen from the consumer's perspective, chances are you're missing a lot of easy, you know, easy leverage points that you could shift really quickly to close a lot more sales, even without outside help. And yes, I'm a firm believer, you should always have a coach if you're committed to growth because the eyeball, I mean, last I checked, can't see itself. And it's also really hard to read the label from inside the bottle. So yes, coaching is valuable, 100%. But you can also coach yourself to a really high degree if you just listen to your calls. Watch the tape. Practice. That's all it is. It's just so, practice. It's just, <laughs> practice, man. It's just uh, practice, so, man. <laughs> so who, who liked this? Like, can we get some, some hard, some like, can you give me a commentary below whoever's still on here? Um, and, and any sort of takeaway, if you have one, if you're willing to share it uh, with the group. Uh, but definitely give us a little bit of, of love and smash those heart buns for Grant here. Thanks, Charlie. Well, Charlie's the man. I love working with this dude. Charlie's oh, a fucking Z. Um, what a boss. Yeah. I appreciate you, Charlie. I see you yeah. all around Facebook. Love you, man. Yeah, Charlie's dope. He's, 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 an, he's a GSD member right now. Um, GSD? Yeah. Uh, but anyways, man, now that I learned that you play acoustic guitar, we now have no choice but to schedule another grant live in our group at some point, and we'll tell you market feedback. No, I know. Should I, should I go grab the, the baritone ukulele I got over there and play like an outro? <laughs> well, we got to save that. We got to keep the audience wanting more. <laughs> so, and that's we're, we're, what's called an open loop. There we go. So maybe we'll, we'll do, maybe we'll do like, like a band. I'll, I'll get a guitar to you and you can teach me live. I don't know. No, it's probably bad. So but, down. Well, maybe we get together and we get a couple tequila shots in us. It's easier to learn when you can loosen up. And yeah. uh, I know you and you know me. We are tequila guys. Yep, I'm a class A Azul. What are you? Do you, handle, do you like that class A Azul? It's a little sweeter. Not as much, to be honest. Uh, yeah, this is so funny. It, I've had some really great top shelf expensive tequilas, but my favorite actually is one called Dulce Vida, and it costs mm. like thirty bucks for a bottle. But it's this organic tequila that is ridiculously smooth. I really like it. You should try it out sometime. I'll There's I'll bring a bottle Costco. when we get together. Okay, oh, perfect. is there? Yeah. There's also one at Costco. The Costco brand came out with some Reposado and an Añejo. I mean, it's like, it's the same. It's like 30 bucks, but it's like a bit, it's a bigger than 750 milliliters. It's like a, one of those like hybrids. It's like not the, the gigantic one. It's not the smaller one. It's right in the middle somehow. Um, but that one's really good too. Um, Dude, Costco is savage. I'm, and I could be wrong. Maybe it's just a rumor, but I've heard like their vodka is gray goose, but they just private label it. Like they get legit alcohol producers to make their own store brand stuff. So if you're not, you don't, yeah. if you don't have a Costco membership, you might consider it. Yeah. Yeah. I was disappointed. Coronavirus killed the samples. That was like half the reason I had Costco. But anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll take this one offline. Sorry for the Costco tequila uh, <laughs> drinking comedies here. But if you guys have a favorite tequila, uh go drop drop that in the in the chat here too so we can go test it out and give you feedback if we agree or not on the next Amen. one maybe we'll, maybe we'll be drinking that bottle there but we anyways, go. thanks so much man thanks for taking a, a a friday afternoon i know it's beautiful in san diego there's there's a lot of beautiful beach views that you can be doing and i'm glad you spent some time here with us amen brother it's always fun i know we'll probably get up to where we got like 10 20 30 videos together eventually but yeah uh, i always hey, love it man. That, we uncover a new be, level Maybe it'll be an interview masterclass. Get them all in one place. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Got it. All right. Well, all right. thank you guys for tuning in. It was fun. Yep. See yep. you next see time. You guys. See you guys next time. And if you're getting to the end here, hashtag live, hashtag replay. And yeah, definitely show your love for Grant. We'll get you his YouTube channel in here. 
in the comments um, and you guys can go subscribe. I encourage you do subscribe because you'll learn a lot um, about about him and also yourself and improve your skills totally free. So I assume it's oh, yeah. everything's free on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, I guess I forgot to say like my whole intention with this is for the YouTube channel to be more valuable than any sales course you've ever taken. So, I mean, let's just take a look. There's quite a bit of free content just waiting for you. I promise it's all applicable. You could take this stuff right now today and close more high ticket sales. So Boom. go do I see it. you there. Yep. Awesome. All right. Thanks for being on. See you, brother. If you liked it, drop a like. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe right down below me and stay tuned because you're going to be real excited to see what happens in the next episode.